All right, the next step is to make a strong grayscale. So in GIMP, you would open this up. And we'll have layers on. So here's layers. And we're going to try to eliminate color very selectively. So this is a green background. We might be able to just get rid of green. Notice no green elements are on the actual butterfly itself, except for right here. So we need almost this element and this element to have the image make sense still. So I can go to colors, and I can go to hue saturation. So overlap allows you to select out green across values. So in case I get green, I got another green, but when it cl climbs into the shadow area, uh, you'll see that shadows in certain images take on the color of your background or your foreground or whatever colors in your environment for that matter. So in this case, if I want to eliminate green, if I have an overlap over here, I can desaturate green and I have to be on the yeah, just make sure I'm on the image here. I also want to select this just in case. There we go. Now let's go to colors and go hue saturation. Let's go to green and desaturate it. And you can see it finally works based upon overlap. And now I can lighten this. Look at that. I can lighten it right out of the scene just about. Now if I climb into the yellow values, I'm going to lose a little bit of um, the color in the wings. And then if I climb into here, I'm going to start losing some of the color on the actual thing. What I'm looking for is getting the background as light as possible and getting the foreground as contrasty as possible. Right about there. Once I start seeing this, see the tearing of pixels right in, in the black area? I know to back down. I'm going to choose to have that up a little bit. And this green value right here is still kind of a pain. There we go. Oh, and that's the sweet spot right there. That one yellow that's yellow is controlling a lot of stuff here. Okay, so what I want to do here is try to eliminate this yellow. Enough where I have. Well, that's psychedelic. So no matter what, I'm going to have to take and uh, hand cut some of this element out. Alright, right about there. Good. So if I want to start uh, working in the background here to get rid of it, I can use such tools as maybe the dodge tool since it's black and white and dodge tool is very easy to control so let's say I go over these elements see how it doesn't damage the butterfly at all 
Now it will in certain areas, like the antenna part right there. But if it's if it's over here, it's not so bad. So I would want to separate the element of the background with the foreground. And a, and a really good way to do that is with the dodge. Now you see what happens if you if you dodge it twice. You dodge it and then you dodge it twice and you got this buildup of this white. Okay? I'm not really too concerned about that. I know that um, I can use that to actually separate the elements out later anyway. So don't get too con hung up on that. Okay. The rest of this, some of the bigger parts, I can take and make a new layer that's transparent and just erase out. By having this up at the top, I can erase back onto the white. Some of these bigger parts are just making them go away. Just like that. Alright, so now this one right here, what I want to do is go into colors and go to levels and level out the grays. Try to get the whitest whites and the grayest grays. And you're going to lose elements. You're going to lose probably the antenna, but try to get some of it there. And hit OK. Now continue to dodge this until you get all the elements that you want. In this case, I want to keep that little nubbin. I'm going to have to go through it a couple times until I get happy with it. I want to keep some of these. I want to lose some of this. Good. So that's a strong grayscale for what we need as far as our workflows are concerned. This will make a good laser engraving. Um, it won't make a good t-shirt because it's still got these elements in here, these little white specks. But for right now, this is a good grayscale, in my humble opinion, for much of the equipment that we use in the lab. Alright, so once you get that, now uh, that's what I want you to do. I want you to actually get to the point where you got a butterfly or a bug or whatever. And be able to get to this point right here before you go on. It's very important that you know, and I can see that you actually know how to do it. So uh, go ahead and even save as. And on the desktop, you already have. Um, whatever you saved, it could be a lion or whatever, but you need to save this one. Let's go maybe export as. So I think that was originally a JPEG. 
Let's make a new folder and call it before and after. And this one is going to be my grayscale. Gray after. Period PNG. Okay. Now I want you to also save this one in the same folder. The one you found in the internet. The one you probably lost, <laughs> but you need it. Gray before. Now it doesn't matter if one's a JPEG and one's a PNG. Alright, so that's the workflow to get it over to a workable grayscale. Now let's go over to a complete black and white in the next video.